Um, okay. So I work on the Cloud Platform Engineering Group. Uh, and we use Swift for a bunch of uh, ver various uh, use cases. Uh, storing images or logs or uh, other, other applications. We went uh, into production in uh, two data centers uh, six months ago, about. So first we're going to do a uh, very quick overview of Swift, then go um, into uh, an interesting use case that we had, and then explain what we're doing across uh, data centers, and then some examples um, and uh, problems that we have had, and then uh, what we can do to uh, improve. And okay. So a quick overview. Uh, Swift is a ma massively uh, scalable, multi-tenant uh, object store. Um, it's eventually consistent. Uh, which means we don't want to use it for um, something that requires huge consistency uh, or databases or file hierarchies. Uh, the ring in Swift is a, um, a data structure which allows you to, uh, which allows uh, Swift to f uh, find the actual location of the object data. It's a consistent hash map. It's a static structure. Um, uh, here's a high-level uh, high architecture. First, you have the uh, uh, access tier at the top. You um, have load balancers, as you would have for uh, most uh, REST applications. The proxy servers handle uh, the inbound requests from the user, uh, authentication, and that's where most of the, uh, of the logic and decision making happens. Uh, below that is the storage um, tier, which you have um, a store, uh, which actually uh, store the object data, the accounts, and the containers. And they're broken up into different zones for, uh, for availability and data protection purposes. Okay. Now our uh, uh, customer use case that we're going to demonstrate. It was an application that has two different parts. There's a part that writes uh, fairly small objects, um, which is a manifest, and it rewrites them, and then stores the actual data parts as roughly 10 meg objects. Then the other side of the application uh, uh, uses, the, uses the container list to find out which uh, objects are available to be read, uh, reads them, and then deletes them. So it's, and there's the, it's a fairly, a fairly high concurrency rate on this. It's sharded across accounts and containers. And it's, uh, and they wanted to use this, uh, use a strategy because they get uh, cross data center replication for free. So across this, uh, uh, now let's go over what um, what this looks like across data centers. Um, for this case, this is about um, 50 to 60 millisecond uh, distance, so a few thousand miles. So typically for multi-region, you get active-active on the cluster. Uh, it's also good, uh, good for uh, disaster recovery. You have to then choose um, how many partitions on what data center you want and balance the uh, rings appropriately. There's a few different um, nuances to this, though. Uh, with uh, increased latency in operations, how you deal with read and write affinity and what the impact there is, increase, uh, increase potential consistency windows, and you have to understand how much bandwidth between the data centers and the reliability of the WAN. So for storage policies, um, isn't something that's necessarily required, but uh, for mobile data centers, it's really, really helpful. For example, you can have one um, policy that's just for one data center, which is a, a plenty of use cases for that. For example, if you want to store um, 
glance images. You don't, you don't need them replicated, so you can just store them locally. But if you're do, uh, storing artifacts for an S, uh, CDN, then you're going to want those replicated, so you can use the uh, replicated policy. It's, the storage policies are basically choosing a particular ring for your object data. So here's a high-level uh, view of a multi-region Swift cluster. We're going to go through a um, write operation with write affinity on. So the first step is the application is going to have to talk to Keystone to get a token and also get the endpoint from Keystone. Now it's going to talk to the connect to the load balancer and send the write request. That's going to get forwarded down to the uh, the proxy node. The proxy node is going to have to process the request, uh, check the token is cache, and then. Depending on your uh, token type, you're going to have to go to the keystone to validate. After that successfully completes, then uh, it's the proxy server is going to open up four connections down to the uh, storage nodes. Uh, two, uh, for this case, we're going to use a rep um, rep replication uh, factor four. So it's going to open up connections to two uh, primary nodes and two handoff nodes. And then the data is going to be written. After that completely su uh, succeeds and the containers are updated, then the request goes, uh, returns back to the user. And we have four copies in this one data center. Then during the object replication process, these two local copies will then get uh, transitioned over to the other data center. So now you have full protection. Uh, So let's see what it looks like for multi-data center um, if we're first time going to get an object. Um, we're going to assume read affinities on. If we see here, we've got um, two data centers, and we got the, uh, the account and container and object rings shown below. Uh, a few things are left out to make this a little, little bit less complicated. So we're going to do uh, a git on the object, goes on the proxy. It's going to check the cache to see if the information for this account is in cache. And it's not. Now we need to go across the WAN to get the um, account information. The, uh, since we're, the RTT is 50 milliseconds, so the actual request um, overhead is at a minimum of uh, 100 milliseconds because it will first connect across pack will need the return and then actually send the uh, re request. So we already uh, burnt 100 milliseconds there. Now we're going to store in cache for next time. Now we need to check the container, and it's not in cache. So we do the same thing. Go back, burn another 100 milliseconds, then store in cache. Then we can go and then read the data and return it to the user. Okay. So let's go. Um, there's another uh, nuance that happens when, if you have write affinity on, if you write an object, you delete the object, you read the object, and then you can still get it back. If you do it, if it happens before the uh, objects get uh, replicated. We're gonna go through the whole process and explain a, f a few other nuances along the way. So we put, uh, we write the four uh, objects, um, the two dotted ones are the handoff locations. We are now then going to write the container updates. And we're going to have to spend 100 milliseconds doing that part, although even though that the object data is actually local. So for small objects, you still get a 100 millisecond hit. And we turn back to the user. Now let's do the delete. We uh, send the request to the proxy node. We write tombstones to all four primary locations. Delete doesn't. Um, the delete has uh, does not uh, obey uh, write affinity, so it will write the four primary locations, two local and two remote. So it'll write the tombstones for those four primary locations. But if the replication doesn't happen, the uh, two handoff locations that are local will stay there for now. 
And eventually, if you wait long enough, they'll get replicated, and then they'll find that the tombstones are later, and then delete those objects. We'll return back to the user success. Let's try the git. So we're going to do a git. We're going to check, find a tombstone, and the proxy server is going to move on. Let's find the next one, tombstone, move on. Then I'll go across to the data center, find the next one, and not there, not there. And then we're going to come back to the handoffs, and it's going to find the copy or return it to the user, even though it's supposed to be deleted. And then the user gets the object back. So you can see in, in, in this use case, if we're using um, container listing and the listings out of sync, the user could get an, old, uh, an object they already processed. Uh, so uh, part of the stuff that we would be useful to know is that there's no impact affinity for accounts containers. So for container listing, you have a 50% chance of going across the WAN. And same thing for those. So if you were to, let's say, create a container, you, it would take uh, 200 milliseconds because you would have to write the four copies, um, two local, two remote, and then those four copies would then need to potentially talk to the other side of the um, cluster. So you burn 100 milliseconds going each direction. The success will read after, uh, after a delete. I just uh, explained to that. Uh, so the, uh, the WAN operations for certain operations will be double or quadruple the RTT at a minimum on top of the, um, the actual uh, processing time under uh, op optimal conditions. Um, another thing that can be done to help uh, control this is in our recent, uh, I believe in 2.4 um, patch, there is a way of controlling uh, a timeout in the async for updating a container. So you could set that to a very low limit. Um, before this update, you could do it by setting uh, the connection timeout on the object server. Uh, to a value that you would feel acceptable, like let's say five milliseconds if you can assume that your um, uh, container servers in your local data center are going to be responsive enough. So it would time out and then write a uh, async pending file locally and then that would be the end to be processed. So there's some ways around, there are ways around this currently but there are uh, uh, room for improvement. And the new patch uh, that came in, I believe, 2.4 uh, really helps that because it would just uh, create a new thread and then process it without writing the um, async pending file to the file system. Also, another thing that's really um, important to do is understand what your worst case scenario over the WAN is. If there's any road construction and your one path needs to go down and then you have an extra 20 milliseconds you didn't account for and how that will affect your uh, SLAs. Um, and also increased replication times because there's the extra latency in all these requests. When you, go to, when you move to multi-region, all of these processes start slowing down because of the latency. You might need to uh, think about increasing concurrency or stuff like that to deal with that, but you have to also be careful of not increasing it too much and dealing with too many TCP connections open. So Swift, what can we do to help improve this? Um, for this read after delete, um, it's, a, it's a pretty simple fix. Um, I don't have the patch submitted yet, but you can simply um, check the timestamps from the previous tombstones you found and just not return the object if it's if the tombstone is uh, newer than your object that you have. Read affinity uh, for accounts and containers. This shouldn't be uh, too hard of a uh, thing to add. And then if we were to have um, the containers update locally and then asynchronously remote, if we have um, the read affinity for accounts containers, uh, at that point then you could have uh, fairly quick access, read-write uh, read access locally 
and have fairly consistent results. And then if the application would fail over to the other data center, um, then there would just be the window for the replication of the account container listing and the objects. Um, and storage policies. Um, it would be, um, which there's a, a, a patch out for this, uh, um, not reviewed yet, about having um, affinity rules set per uh, storage policy, which would be really powerful because then the application can choose which level of consistency it doesn't want. Does the application want to take the penalties and have everything written synchronously to ensure all copies are there? Or is asynchronous or write affinity writes better? Which is really powerful if you have a generalized system and you don't want to be uh, spinning off one-off clusters for a, s a single use case. Another really important thing uh, that would really help out is that the objects that get written with write affinity are written and then the write, uh, object replicator will then go and replicate the objects. So it has to wait through the walk of the whole file system to find the objects and then send them. And if there's um, uh, problems, that can be hours or days. Um, if you're operating well, then it's only a few minutes, possibly, depending on the number of inodes you have in your system and stuff. But that makes it a lot, a lot more difficult and a lot more uh, time managing it and making sure that the replication happens. There could be, uh, there's, there's ways around this of queuing these async writes and then having a process um, um, send them as fast as possible versus waiting to a full file system walk. And also um, the other uh, p potential improvement is for uh, uh, TCP connection pooling where if we keep these connections established, we don't have to wait double the RTT. We could just wait single for the cross data center connections. So that would cut uh, operations in half potentially. Any questions? Um, Have you looked at the uh, three data center case for this, or is this only, you're only doing a double replication? I'm only doing two right now. Two sites, okay. Yes, correct. You're not dealing with the eventual consistency issues across an active active. Yeah, correct. The question was if there's a event, it's an active passive application where the application fails over from one data center to the other. So you have the window of the uh, replication time. So it, um, getting that reduced would be very beneficial for a failure scenario. So I don't have objects uh, orphaned for too long. You're, you're using four-way replication, which requires that three of the copies need to be accessed. Are you also doing, f two questions, when are you also doing that for the containers and the accounts? Yes. Um, and how does the WAN, I mean, what happens if the WAN goes down on that? Does that mean you can't be creating objects? Without? You can go, you can still create objects and do that over the WAN. Uh, but you may want to look at doing five replicas for the account container because there's cases where you get 503s if there's problems with the WAN sometimes. Okay, and how does the four work where you need to get three copies is? Yes. No, 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 how does it work? How's your experience with it not? Oh, yes, um, it works pretty well. But you do get some issues. It's mostly with um, container, container operations, create and delete. So those are fairly infrequent, so it depends, depends uh, what the use case is, kind of. Oh, sorry, go for it. Have you done anything in terms of tuning the, the WAN and monitoring the WAN? Um, you know, 
for, for the replicator to deal with uh, you know, any tooling that, that in terms of bandwidth or experience on uh, the replicator going over the web? Uh, we haven't had uh, too many problems with that uh, for uh, reaching bottlenecks or the WAN yet. Awesome. Thank you.